Okay, good morning, everyone. My name's Peter Coveney. I run something called the Centre for Computational Science at UCL. Uh, the catchphrase for us is advancing science through computers, which gives us carte blanche to work on anything in the scientific domain these days. One of the areas that's become um, tremendously exciting from a computational point of view is uh, this new area, emerging area of biomedicine, sort of using methods drawn from the physical sciences, mathematics and engineering to perform things like modeling and simulation. Coupled with data from patients, you're then looking at the possibility of doing personalized medicine, predictive things, in an area that's relatively unfamiliar with the whole idea of modeling and simulation, uh, let alone the capability to predict things ahead of time. But that's the essence of this. If you've got sufficiently high fidelity models and you can simulate fast enough, you can provide support in um, situations that you could imagine um, could benefit from that type of uh, capability. So that's what we're uh, aiming for in a large part of what we do in my own center. And this meeting um, is run by the, a new uh, European Center of Excellence in high performance computing funded under the Horizon 2020 program called Computational Biomedicine. I currently coordinate that program and it just began in October last year. So I want to tell you a little bit about that because it sets the context for this meeting uh, today and then we'll move over to uh, the sessions. I hope you've already got um, the material for the program and so on. So I do want to welcome you here first of all to University College London and I hope you'll find the day interesting with plenty of opportunity for discussions. Let's just take a look at what um, this particular Centre of Excellence is about. Um, as I've just indicated, it's trying to promote the role of biomedical modelling and simulation and it's kind of uh, uh, stakeholders or interest groups are quite diverse in the sense that there's certainly a lot of academic activity in this space now. And as we'll see today, in order to meet these demanding requirements of managing confidential data and then putting them together with high fidelity simulations to produce answers in very short timescales, that's one of the most demanding areas actually of computational science today. And yet, uh, on a national level, it's embarrassing to think that most of our research councils don't actually fund this kind of work. It's being funded by the EU because it's got a long tradition of promoting the role of high performance computing and technologies associated with it in a range of areas, and healthcare is one of them. So there's, there's academic work going on. Uh, the interest groups include immediately industry uh, and in areas like medical devices, how you get data and interpret it. Uh, in the pharmaceutical area, particularly interesting today in the, in the context of drug design and potentially personalized decision making around uh, selection of drugs in the future. And, so the, 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 and then there's the healthcare sector and, and the clinical end where um, the, the challenge is currently the most, the greatest because there's the least understanding of the methodologies. But the rewards are potentially the greatest. So we have any level of uh, relevance here from the molecular end up to the whole uh, organism, in this case what one could call the virtual human, and we're not going to have a virtual human coming down the stairs here to take over speaking uh, in my place anytime soon, but this is a program for uh, the future of medicine that's certainly going to last the rest of this century and beyond as we build in the capabilities at the, all the levels. So we have molecular uh, medicine, we have uh, in the project particularly cardiovascular activities around blood flow, heart, um, brain and so on and the, the neuromuscular skeletal are, are represented by partners and exemplars within the project. Uh, the purpose of the meeting today, then, is to look at what requirements this imposes on us for high-performance computing, because we're interested in doing uh, high-fidelity modeling that's at speed and needs to be scalable to the size of the problem you're working on. 
The speed is ultimately dictated by the end user. How fast do I want a result? I want the result uh, today, tomorrow, in some cases within half an hour. Or it's, as they say, of academic interest because I can't use it to uh, make some kind of uh, actionable decision. So I've just mentioned the healthcare and clinical end, research and development. And the high performance computing community tr traditionally is, is something that's established in the academic world with large scale funding from uh, research agencies and the like. And uh, so it's government based funding and it dictates the kind of users who work with these resources. They typically have to bid for the, uh, for the uh, allocations in some form of competitive process and it ends up becoming quite an elite activity only for a limited number of people whereas the message that we're trying to convey today is that's not good enough these these technologies are important in a much wider time in, in a much wider context so if you're seeing the opportunities to use high performance computing and you understand the power but also the limitations you want to somehow reach out to get onto these systems, you're confronted by a number of barriers along the lines that I said mainly academics use these resources. If you want to use them and you're doing commercial or healthcare and um, confidential applications, these kind of infrastructures are not necessarily fit for purpose, which is why this other alternative of cloud computing comes rapidly into the picture. If you're suddenly wanting to use these resources in your own uh, environment, like most hospitals I've ever come across certainly don't have high performance computing machines. Many companies in the sector concerned certainly don't. They're expensive. We're talking about tens, tens of millions of pounds to get machines on the scale we're interested in. Then you might think, let's not spend the money on the infrastructure and on the support teams. Let's just buy into the resources when we need them. And that's the cloud system that I'm thinking of. It's a third party, typically commercially active, making money out of an operation where they provide you with what could be a service. So you don't have to worry about keeping the infrastructure going. So we want to look at that, what commercial model that is, the flexibility, the security issues, and then see whether those two things are actually uh, disjoint or can interoperate with one another in a flexible way, depending on your needs. So let's look inside the Comp Biomed project briefly, the HPC resources that we have by virtue of the partnership are substantial indeed anyway. And you'll hear more about those during some of the sessions today, I think the beginning ones. Uh, the high performance computing resources like one, the UK national facility called Archer and a new machine that's come on to help with some of the more commercial activities called Cirrus Gavin Pringle, I can see there from uh, EPCC, the Edinburgh Parallel Computing Centre, will speak a little bit about those. Barcelona Supercomputer Supercomputing Center has a large machine called Mary Nostrum. It's actually just been decommissioned. There's an embarrassing few months before the next procurement takes over, but they're heavily involved in our project. Surf Sara has uh, a, a sizable, um, I think, Intel-based machine with GPU uh, accelerators on it, and that's in the Netherlands. And, and uh, I, so the GPU multi-core issue will probably raise its head during the discussions today. We have heterogeneity in the resources we can access. Leibniz Supercomputing Center um, has uh, the, the sort of largest of the resources we have uh, maybe more directly available uh, through um, SuperMOOC. That's a picture of it on the, on the right hand side. I don't actually seem to have a pointer to show you. The lot, one of the, 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 the bottoms of the slide. That's actually got about 250,000 cores on it. Archer has around 120,000 and they're, they're pretty big machines. PRACE is a European infrastructure. It's uh, for research uh, and advanced computing in Europe and we do have allocations coming into the project that are top slides from PRACE to support us. That provides us with a machine for example called PISDAINT that some people will know here which is a Cray slash uh, NVIDIA uh, so GPU accelerated machine, which, which is actually, I think, the top number eight in the top 500 right now. So, so we, ha we can get access to pretty substantial resources. On the other hand, to repeat, the difficulty of getting onto those and deploying these technologies to applications which are directly commercial 
makes it interesting to look at other providers and the division between high performance computing as it traditionally was and what you can get in terms of power on a modern cloud is, is blurring as it were with every day. But we have uh, three kind of uh, three companies involved with us in this project that offer services that are very relevant to some of the community. So Microsoft and Amazon Web Services will be talking about some of their capabilities and DNA Nexus, which provides uh, an ultra secure environment for running compute jobs that may in fact be running underneath on those clouds. So briefly, just to make sure we inform you of what Comp Biomed is about. I've said it's a center of excellence. It has a membership I'll rapidly show you in a, uh, shortly, but it's very much focused on building a community. It's outward looking. We have a range of upcoming events, and I'm just listing some of those there. Uh, if you're into praise, which I just mentioned earlier, there's a whole week called an HPC summit in Europe, and we're featuring it, that in Barcelona on the 16th of May. Another open workshop, which is again directly relevant to a subset of the people who are interested in today's meeting on the prediction, the use of free energy calculations for, um, let's say, drug discovery in particular. This is a topic which is of immense concern and interest currently. We've got a workshop on that on the 31st of May. So that relates to some of the topics that will come up uh, in today's talk. We have another meeting with an, uh, another project so the, the, one, the free energy workshop is with BioXL, which is a center of excellence, and we have Open Multimed collaborating with us, which is a cost action across Europe in um, September. Finally, to cap it all this year, we're working on an IMAX event, which will take place in the Science Museum in London in a lakes event. that will be an evening event uh, on the 27th of September. That's to show the general public the spectacular kinds of capabilities that come out of high performance computing coupled to visualization for the virtual human. Here's the list of partners. You've got leaflets which describe some of this in detail. It's an interesting partnership in my opinion because it includes about half of the partners are academic centers. Three of them are uh, European supercomputing centers, a uh, couple of SMEs and uh, major companies such as uh, Janssen in Pharmaceuticals. The associate partnership should be of interest to people who like this kind of work because we're very open to that and we've now got more associate partners than partners themselves and we take this role very seriously. Many of the people who are listed there are participating in this meeting and some of the projects involve them and their resources and capabilities directly and centrally in what we're doing. And so we're open for that in the future. We're always urged to promote ourselves, and if you're into the social media side of things, Twitter, LinkedIn, you've got an opportunity to go online and uh, interact with us through that. This slide just shows you how you can do it today, and I'm sure there will be various postings. If you want to do that, please uh, help us promote what we're about. There's a LinkedIn group as well. Uh, there is also a live recording of this event taking place on YouTube. So you can go to YouTube Comp Biomed, and I hope uh, you would be able to see us and the speakers uh, during the day, and we'll keep this as a record. So I want to thank Microsoft in particular, who are very enthusiastic about uh, the type of work we're doing. They've uh, wanted to sponsor this event, and we're delighted that they have done so. So I acknowledge that, and actually for academic participants in this, the Azure uh, Cloud um, offering uh, is, is a $500 worth cloud credit for people. And you can get uh, hold of that by talking to Kenji Takeda today. Where is Kenji? You might want to wave. He's right at the back there. Um, to talk to him about it and look at the Azure for Research uh, website. Feedback, you'll get some questions from you, questionnaire from us to fill in before the end of the meeting. We need to understand what your views of this meeting are, how we might um, improve for the future. We'll have a panel discussion towards the end, and we're interested in questions for that. They can be logged live in the event, but if you want to pose them ahead so we get ready for some of the uh, questions, then please let us know. Speakers must remain at the podium. I'm reminding them all because of the, the need for this recording. And my last slide here is 
just to emphasize, you know, it's an open community and it's growing fast. And I do believe, for reasons I'm not going to elaborate right now, this, this methodology and technology is the future of medicine. And I do think that the European Commission believes centrally in that as well. So with that, I'll stop and thank you.